Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Shreveport podcast. We are so excited about this podcast because we are talking to women who tell our story. And today uh, we have Miss Brickley Strickland. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm a little nervous. I understand. <laughs> Listen, we're excited to have you here. Uh, of course, we are interviewing women during this Women History Month uh, concerning um, media, those that are in media that tell okay. our story. Mm -hmm. uh, and you are the first one uh, for I'm our Love Street for a podcast. Mm -hmm. So history in the making on today, mm -hmm. and we're glad that you're here. So tell us a little bit about who Brittany Strickland is. Okay. Um, well, first and foremost, um, I'm a child of God. Um, you know, that a lot of times people ask me that, and here lately I've kind of been saying, I'm just God's daughter. Just humble, just grateful and thankful. Um, on my way taking my daughter to school, I was telling my kids how, just how thankful that I am of where we came from to where we are now. And it is all 1,000% because of, you know, me just st trying to stay in alignment. With, with him and, and the foundation that I was taught as a young young child. Um, I'm, a, I'm a mama. Um, I'm a storyteller. I'm a seer. I'm a creator. I'm a photographer. I'm an author. A lot of people don't know that. Um, I wrote a book. Actually, I wrote two. Um, and I'm also a designer. I have a whole clothing line that, um, that pairs up with the books that I write. And, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so... I mean, I could keep going because I feel like I was telling somebody yesterday, you know, I was, I was honored yesterday to go into uh, Agora Borales mm -hmm. and shoot shot for shot for, for, the, for women. And um, I, I was so, I, I thought this was the coolest thing. So many women who, like, didn't really necessarily have a title. But when I would say, so what do you do? They were like, oh, I'm a mom. And I began to go, hey, listen, when you say that you're a mom, don't there's no re, there's no don't I'm a mom that's a that's right, right. 50,000 titles of course in one title right of course. and so yeah it was really cool yesterday to um, to do that and to see that and so yeah that's I mean I'm just a whole lot of things now we're, we're in Women's History Month right so yes. uh, I'm honored to be able to sit and do this interview because we've got some capable ladies that mm -hmm. can do the interview mm -hmm. you, you talk about being a mom mm -hmm. during this Women's History Month what is the the struggles of being a mom. What, what, how important is it uh, to be a mom? You, you talked about, oh, wow. you know, the ladies dropping their head, but they mm -hmm. should keep their head high when they talk 1, about being a mom. One thousand percent. Gosh, to be a mom. Um, of course, I'm from a long line of, you know, broken marriages and single mamas, and um, I actually have a, a slave tattoo of. It was really based out of Hebrews six nineteen, talking about um, staying anchored to the Lord. But the whole part of that, I have a, like the top of this is a gypsy, um, like a woman. Mm -hmm. And it was to honor my, the women in my family because we really do love unconditionally. But for whatever reason, all of us have been divorced. And, and, and still yet, we've seen to raise mm -hmm. amazing men and women. And um, I am the best mom that I can be honestly from my mom now she's no longer with us she passed away um, nine years ago of ovarian cancer um, and both of my aunts which were her two sisters passed away of ovarian cancer and so I mean when they say that um, it takes a tribe I think it does take a tribe and I think that it um, I think it takes grit and hard work and you know I've always told my kids I love y'all but I'm not here to be your friend. Yeah. I'm here to be your mom. Of course. And I'm here to raise you up in the way you should go. I'm here to prepare you for life. I'm here to prepare you for the attacks of the enemy. I'm here to, you know, I'm not here to play with you. I'm here to raise you up. And, um, you know, I never in a million years thought that I would be divorced. I definitely did not get married to get a divorce. But, you know, things happened. And um, I think from my very early on in my childhood I just wanted to not be like my the women in my family because they were like that they oh I'm, I'm a mom or well I'm trying to do this or I'm trying to do that and I was like no 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 yeah. I'm gonna always do this differently so when that happened to us um, I just knew right then like 
oh, no, 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 they will, I will show them, I will teach them, hey, no matter what happens, you have the capability to get up, to get up and move forward with your life because of who you are and whose you are, period, in a discussion. Now, now you, you mentioned that was great. You mentioned something about grit, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to have some grit, I know, with what you do. Now, you started off telling us a lot about what you do, mm -hmm. but we're talking about some things you do, like the photography work. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that photography work. Okay. Um, well, if I, it's a, it's a long story, but I'll make it really short. Um, that was actually my very first job. My aunt was actually a film photographer wow. when I was very little. And so I would go to my grandmother's and spend the weekends while she still lived with my grandmother. And so we would photograph, but she, she only would do like animals and like outside stuff. And, and so we would, we would shoot it, but then she taught me how to use the dark, the, um, well, I just lost my, the word, to go in the, the room, the film room. I can't think of what the, the name is, but um, we, we, she would, she taught me from all, like, how did you, how to put the film in, and mm. I just thought that was so cool. Well, then fast forward, um, I kind of was always the person that was always taking pictures and, you know, going to school and with my friends, and, you know, I was the, the artist that had all different things on her walls and so yeah. you know it was all pictures that I had taken and and so um, I had my son who's now 18 and and you know that's such a, a moment right mm -hmm. and then I had my second son who passed away wow. um, and then I had my third my, my third child who is my my daughter and um, you know you go through all these things and and you want it you want to like freeze this moment right but you can't and, and then the older you get, you realize that really time is of the essence because it, you never can get it back. It just slips away. And so um, I guess about 15 years ago, some friends of mine um, got married off in uh, Atlantis and we were there. And I was just blown away at what, what was being captured, what was being done. And I thought, oh, oh my gosh, like this is how you freeze a moment. Then of course, when my mom passed away, my whole life shifted because I just never thought she was gonna die that soon. Right. She was 54. And so it was like, okay, how can I make this, like how am I gonna, how am I gonna freeze this time that I have left with my kids? How am I gonna freeze? And so that was it. That was when I really like went into my, my, my thing of how I do photography and, um, I just wanted people to know like, hey, this may be the only thing that you have left is are these images of the past or what's about to happen or because it just always goes away, time always goes away. Wow, that's amazing because you hear people say seize the moment, but you're freezing the moment. That, so that yes, can, I actually you know, say that all the time, that, right? right? So yes. tell us who your biggest inspiration is. Oh Lord, okay. Um, well, obviously, Obviously, Jesus. Um, my children. Wow. You know, my children, you hear that a lot. People are mm -hmm. like, I did I do it for my children. Like, and, and I have, you know, my why is that my children are part of it. But I'm inspired every morning when they wake up and they're alive and they have breath in their lungs and sight in their eyes and mm -hmm. that they, they're still so young that they look at the day as with joy and with and and so they that just inspires me to to keep my perspective right um gosh okay so i i wrote this down in the middle of the night last night what's your biggest inspiration um and this is going to sound weird but i think people will understand um i my inspiration from my mom would be for staying like she always stuck with me you know, there's no, you don't have very many constants on the on this planet, mm -hmm. but my mama, regardless of what was going on, she was a constant, right? Wow. Um, but my also, it would be my daddy for leaving. Wow. Yeah, and 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 like you know, what in, what inspires you? Well, my dad left. So what did that do? Well, it taught me very young rejection, and so it taught me instead of being rejected and being like, woe is me, which don't get me wrong, I spent some years being woe is me, but in my healing of that, I realized that like, wow, like 
I probably would not be where I am as the world thinks that you have made it or whatever, you know. Um, but in my mind, I'm like, yo, like he taught me hard things when I was a little bitty girl. And so because of that, instead of me using it and being bitter and resentful and, you know, whatever, I've really tried to use it as in like, yo, like that's my inspiration. My yeah. dad left and he rejected me, but look at what I've done with it. Wow. You know? Wow. So, yeah. I mean, you know, I always, the underdog is always going to be my inspiration. And then if you want to like not be so deep, um, I'm going to always <laughs> say Prince because Prince is Lord. Yeah, like, Prince was the man. Like he. Okay. Yeah, I loved his music. Okay. I loved his music. I loved what he looked like. <laughs> I loved all, th I mean, like, there's actually a story in my baby book of my mom waking up in the middle of the night and hearing something. And she found me on the floor w with MTV, because that's how old I am, um, <laughs> with MTV on watching Prince teaching myself his dance moves. And I would literally say, Mom, I'm going to marry him one day. Like, he's my husband. <laughs> and she would be like, okay, okay baby, but, but he, you know, he's way older than you. I'm like, no, nope, no, he's not. <laughs> so You didn't care. No, I Age didn't was care. just a number that's for you, right? right? That's right. <laughs> so why do you love Shreveport so much? Um, I love Shreveport so much because, wow, um, you know, I get to travel with my photography, which mm. is just such a blessing because, you know, I, I need to move around. Mm -hmm. If I start feeling like a little caged bird, yeah. I will break loose. <laughs> um, but, you know, for whatever reason, I always come home to here. Yeah. And it's like a big city, but with a little bitty, uh, that little bitty community mm -hmm. thing, right? Um, and when you find your people, you're, they support you yeah. and they love you through it. And they, I mean, you know, somebody told me I was um, sh actually shooting a wedding, I don't know, in Dallas or somewhere, not here. And they were like, so where are you from? And I said, well, I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana. And they were like, and you're successful? Yeah. And I just looked at that. The, it was this, um, a man. And I said, oh, yes, sir. Very. And I don't normally throw this out there, but I was like, oh, yes, sir. I was like, so if it wasn't for Shreveport, I wouldn't be able to do what I do because Shreveport continues to feed my kids. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, honey, if you made it in Shreveport, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> and I was like, you know, to him, that was kind of a jab. He right, didn't right, mean right. it as a jab. But for me, I was it, it, that was just added grit to like, mm, yeah, exactly. There are a lot of successful, successful peaceful people here mm -hmm. in Shreveport and from Shreveport. Yes. So uh, Shreveport produces a lot of successful people. Right. So, uh, again, we're grateful for you being here. Listen, in your field, give us some, give some young, inspiring young ladies that want to be in your field. Give them some advice. Okay. So my first, my first thing would like, I would, my first thing I would say to somebody is, hey, if this is really what you want to do, I'm going to need you to just go. Mm -hmm. And most people are like, wait, well, but, but I'm scared. Well, then you better speak to that spirit of fear and get it off of you or you'll stay locked up forever. Because that is really what happened to, you know, to me. I literally could have, I was on that, that teeter-totter that mm -hmm. we're always on every mm -hmm. single day. Um, you know, I come from, like I said, a family of women who stayed comfortable. And because they stayed comfortable, they made it. They, they, they lived in their little houses and they did their little things and they were strong women and they were, you know, prayer warriors and this and this and this. But they still, they lived bound, mm -hmm. if that makes any mm -hmm. sense. And so I am very proud of myself to say that I'm the first woman in my family that bought her house by herself. Wow. I'm the first woman in my family that you know, made a successful business. And now at this moment, at this point, I'm a six figure income person. Well, wow. my family has always lived in poverty. I mean, a lot of people don't know this about me, but like when I was a freshman in high school, I, yeah, 94, 94, everybody had running water. Well, we didn't. Wow. And so I just knew way back then, it was like, I'm not supposed to live my life like this. Right. I'm just going to stand up and do what I need to do. Of course. And so that's what I would say. It was like, do you stay in that, in that 
place of fear or do you just get up and run with it? And that's what I did. And so that's what I would say. Like fear is just a thing that's never going to leave you because you have to have it, mm-hmm. right? Because if a tiger walks in this room, you got to know like, yo, you better get to stepping. But the other fear is it's nothing, you know? And so that's what I would say at first. Um, definitely step into whatever your calling is. Um, always remember that you know, the word says um, that he turns beauty from ashes. And that's legit. That is legit. I mean, that is legit, man. (laughs) Like, when I tell you I come from, you know, what, like what I'm saying, I mean, we we, we didn't even have money for gas to get to church. So my mom, and we had mattresses on the floor, but my mom would sit every Sunday morning when we couldn't go to church and and we'd have church at home. I mean, you you just do what you got to do, right? And so that's what, again, what I would say. Um, Align yourself, heed your call. Um, you got to have grit, man. You got to not, you, when somebody says no, you got to go, okay, and keep asking, yeah. keep trying, keep pushing. Um, live below your means. Uh, you know, just because, just because you get a big fat check don't mean you need to go out there and buy the first. Now that's big. Truck. Mm-hmm. That's big, especially with the culture and things 1, now. Yes. That is huge. That is some sound advice. Yes. Yeah, thank you. I, I mean, I could probably do more than what I do now, but I refuse because, first of all, it's not about that. And second of all, I always want to be able to provide a service um, where I, it's not just overly uh, outrageous because I have forgotten where I came from or right. I have forgotten. And that would be the next thing I would say. Don't ever forget where you came from because the Lord will quickly put you back where, yes. Yes. He will he, humble you. Yes, he will. Um, be obedient. Be nice. Jesus, if he would just be nice. Of course. Lord, I mean, just be nice. Um, learn balance. As much as you got to hustle, you got to rest. Yeah. You are not Jesus. You are, you, there was only one of him. You know, that, so I am, that means I am flesh. I am human. Can and I take these notes? You sure can. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. But yeah, I could keep going. I mean, people ask me all the time. I think the last thing I would say would be, um, don't be scared to do whatever it is that you want to do. Right. Because I was told very, I've, I've been told for the last 15 years, you know, you could be way more successful if you just pick one thing. Just pick one thing. I did pick one thing. And just because it doesn't look like what you think I should have picked does not mean, why, like, stop cutting me down, you know? And so my, my photography is not about an edit. It's not about dark and moody or light and airy. Or my photography is about giving somebody a voice to be able to tell their story, however much they want to tell or however little they want to tell. Wow. And that stems from, again, honing in on not the fact that my mom stayed, my dad left, my step parents were abusive. I I just from a very learn uh, young age learned that the more quieter I was, the less chaos I caused. Mm. So I just would evaporate and just stay very hidden. Well, what I'm learning, the older I get, is a lot of people are like that. Yes. And so, so many of us, we might not can tell the full story mm-hmm. out of coverage for someone or protection for this thing or the, but you, if, if you just get a little bit out of you, yeah. then healing comes. Of course. And that's what that's why I do what I do. Man, this so you is just awesome. have to find what it is that you do and get it. Yeah. And then not be scared to tap into it and go with it, you know? Awesome. Listen. <laughs> so ten years from now, where do you yes. see yourself? Okay, ten years from now. Ten years from now. Gosh, ten years from now I'll be fifty two years old, which sounds no. like a dinosaur to me. <laughs> but um but it's not because you know, I'm I'm that crazy person that like continuously is like, oh no. And gee, I am renewed. I am restored. <laughs> I am from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. There you go. From inside of every cell. See? I mean, yes, I will speak to it. Um, okay, so 10 years from now, you know, if I'm being 1,000% honest, which I normally am, um, I want to be on a beach, yeah. semi-retired. Um, I want to give back to people. I want to. I want to teach. Uh, not full time, because I really want to be. I want to breathe. I've spent so much of my life in survival mode, 
and hustle mode and I got to get this, not because of, like I said, living beyond my means, but for the fact of feeding my children. Of course. Um, and, you know, be, because of that, I, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't have any, I don't have any help, um, meaning I'm not remarried. Um, I don't get any child support from my ex-husband. I don't see my dad. I don't, you know, my mom's passed away. So it's been all just me and Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so I just want that's the so, best combination, huh? It sure is. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Look, I tell him every day, Lord, thank you for not letting go of me because I'm the crazy person, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I, on, I love the beach. I want to be on the beach. I want to teach. I want to give back. I want to sh share my story because, be, because I, I don't look like my story, if that makes sense. That's right. I understand. Yeah. I understand. So with this career. Mm -hmm. Do you have anybody that you are planning to pass the legacy and the baton to? Mm. Do you want this to continue your legacy that you started mm -hmm. this career? Do you mm -hmm. want it to continue for years to come? Yes, I really hope so. I really hope that it's kind of crazy that you, you know, that wasn't on my, on my thing. Mm -hmm. So that's crazy that you asked. And then I just said what I said. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've mentored several photographers um, but they haven't really, their thing was not storytelling. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So every now and again, because both of my kids are very much artists, um, do I ever think that they're going to pick up a camera and start shooting? Probably not, but I do know that my legacy will continue through their artistry. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like he, he's a welder, and so what is he going to do for the rest of his life? or for however long he wants to do it, he's literally gonna build things with his art. And oh, I yes. hope that with what he's learned from me, he, it can kind of infiltrate into that. Um, same thing with my daughter. We only, the Lord only knows what she's gonna do. But, you know, I do hope to, I do have a curriculum already written up. Um, so I really do hope to really tap into artists being able to, to help them learn how to be them mm -hmm. To tell their story and then p help people heal through telling their story, no matter what their art is. Wow. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. It does. Brittany, we are excited that you came. We appreciate your time because we know time is valuable. You have froze the moment <laughs> Thank you. for us <laughs> Thank so that we can you. sit down and just chat with you and hear your story because you. you tell so many other stories. We were so glad to be able to hear your story. So tell everybody where they can find you, email, uh, website, okay. social media, all of that good stuff. Okay. Um, so my website is BritElizabeth.com. Mm -hmm. um, my Instagram is at the Brit Elizabeth. My Facebook is Brittany Strickland or Brit Elizabeth Photography. And that's real. I don't do, I, I don't have time for the snap a chat. Sorry. <laughs> TikToks. I know. I tell my kids, I'm like, I don't understand tiki talkies. They're <laughs> like, Mom, it's TikTok. I'm like, Well, I don't understand the snappy chappies and the. Mm -mm, I'm too old. So if y'all want to do that for me, and they're like, No, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm for not. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. And so yeah, I mean, you just and you know, my my website is very. Um, you can like, if you wanted to see about my stuff, I mean, it's full of information. Sure. Actually, has a video on there yeah. of um, someone that came into my uh, my studio and. He kind of did the same thing that we're doing, um, and then he actually followed me around for a while, and so you can see kind of what I did, and then there's you can fill out a form, and, and I'll get back with you. And of course, yeah, of course. Well, thank you again for your time, Brittany. Thank you we so appreciate much. you. I'm honored. Listen, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Love Shreveport TV, and follow us on all of our social media platforms: Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Facebook, City of Shreveport Government, and it has the blue check. Also on Instagram, yes, City of Shreveport, it has the blue check. And then Twitter, at Love Shreveport 1. All right. Thank you all again for tuning in to the Love Shreveport podcast. We've had Brittany Strickland here as we are interviewing and talking to women during Women's History Month who tell a story. And we believe you have a story. So, again, thank you for tuning in. One.